What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie and this is Hustle and Grow. In today's video, we're going to talk about five ways, five things that you can do to beat out the competition. If you've been struggling with sales, you've been struggling just getting your business to grow to get to that next level, trust me when I tell you, if you focus on these five things, one at a time, and you build upon each of these things, you, will, you are guaranteed to progress. Guaranteed to progress. And you will definitely put yourself at the upper end of, you know, the competition in whatever niche it is that you sell in or whatever your business is, okay? Now these are in no particular order, so I'm not saying do this first, this second, third, fourth, and fifth, but these are all things that you should be working on uh, in one way or another, okay? So number one, never stop sourcing, all right? This is, this is gonna be important because this is the lifeblood of your reselling business, okay? You can never stop looking for sources of whatever type of items it is that you sell. I don't care, even if you have a great relationship with one, two, three sources at the moment, those things can go away in, in the blink of an eye. And so I'm not saying that you need to be, have fit 10, 15, or 20, but I mean, you know, maybe you have three to five good sources that you use, and then you have another three to five possibles. Maybe some people that you, you, you make small purchases from, or some businesses that you make small purchases from here and there, just to keep and maintain a good relationship. But you can never stop looking for sources, okay? Me, myself, I found good sources on eBay, uh, Amazon. There's some distributors. I've spent hours and hours just going through Google searches and going past the first page, of course, going to the third, fourth, fifth, sixth page of Google searches just to see what's there and, and to see what I can find. And yeah, a, a good amount of the time, I don't find anything, but every once in a while I come across a good source and it ends up working out. As of right now, and I found a source on eBay that has turned out thus far to be a really good source, man. And the products are better than a lot of the other sources that I've been using um, as of late. So, and that's just, you know, me searching, looking for stuff, going back and making a test purchase, you know, maybe get 200, 200 items. And if that worked out, maybe get 500. And if that worked out, maybe I get a couple thousand pieces. But, you know, it, it just takes a constant always of searching, man, and never allowing yourself to be comfortable with a good thing because that good thing can turn into nothing in, in ASAP, you know what I mean? And never allow your business to just depend definitely on only one source. If you only got one source, you, you, should, be, you should be worried. You should be worried. Heck, I feel like if you only got two, you should be worried, okay? As the saying goes, one is none, two is one, right? Three, you know, it's a lot better. So remember that one is none, two is one. Three is definitely optimal where you might want to be. And then five is, is, is a really good spot to be where you can just rotate out uh, things like that. But um, so that's number one. Number two is account health. OK, without your account, you can't sell. Right. So, I mean, this is just a no brainer. But you can't just look at your account health as like this thing that you kind of keep up on, but it's. Is, I feel like some people don't really take their account seriously until it's in trouble, you know, and, and this is evidenced by some of the things that you'll hear when people talk about how their accounts got suspended, whether it's um, eBay, Amazon or whatever. <clears throat> A lot of times when you look past, you know, the initial, oh, my account got suspended, I don't, I don't know what's going on. You know, there's always some things where they were negligent and not addressing the issues on eBay. It could be not addressing defects, right? Maybe you got late shipment defects. Maybe you got item not as described defects. Maybe you got too many V-rolls and you just ain't doing your due diligence and what kind of items, you know, you, you probably shouldn't be listing. Um, things like that on, on Amazon. Maybe it's, you know, you got IP claims and things like that or counterfeit claims and things like that that you haven't addressed. A lot of times on these platforms, whether it's eBay or Amazon, if you address the issues, you know, you, 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 you can a lot of times get those things removed from your account and you'll be good. Even on Amazon, you know, they don't always, depending on how old your account is, they don't always just shut you down because you get a counterfeit uh, claim or because you get an, a claim for expired items or IP claim. But you have to address those things immediately. 
immediately, okay? You can't let them sit and fester. That's just not good, okay? You have to look at your account as, I mean, it's, it's, it's everything, right? It's everything. And I think some people might not put a dollar value on your account, but put, start putting a dollar value on your account. How much is your account worth per year? Ask yourself that. How much is it worth per year? Is it worth 50,000, 100,000, 200,000, 500,000, a million? How much is that worth per year? And is it worth, and if you look at it that way, maybe it'll even keep you from listing certain items. Like is a $100,000 account worth listing a $20 item that might get you a Vero? Or, or listen, a $20 item that might get you an IP claim that could shut down your account or it could just put you through more hassle than you want it to be. OK, no, it's really not right. It's really not in the long term. It's really not. So account health is of paramount importance. You should always address any issues immediately, immediately. And you should always be looking to maintain 100 percent on everything. If, if you ain't 100 percent in one area or category, then that's the area you need to focus on and get that to 100 percent. Because the fact of the matter is, if you are out 100 percent and something happens, then that gives you a little, you know, wiggle room. And you're not already, you know, working out a deficit and, 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 and on a precipice of being suspended. Number three, and this is definitely something I know that people on eBay uh, don't pay attention to, is presentation. Presentation, man. The, the way you present your item in a listing, whether it's pictures, your description, the way that you ship an item out to a customer and how they receive that item, you know, the, the packaging itself, the condition of the item, that's everything. And that's a lot of why a lot of people get negative feedback on eBay, especially, is that I, <laughs> I know this from personal experience from things that I order on eBay and it just comes to me and I'm just like, what, what is people thinking? Like, I would never ship an item out looking like this to somebody. I would never use this type of packaging. And, and, and it's not so much sometimes how the item itself looked. It's the fact that they didn't describe it right. You know, they didn't let you know in a listing that it might look like that. That's what gets me is that, you know, this wouldn't be so bad if you had told me this is what I would get. Because sometimes, honestly, I might need an item to fulfill an order on another platform because maybe I oversold, I just didn't pay attention, I don't know, you know, whatever. And so, and I hate to order from eBay sometimes because it just, it doesn't, I'll, I'll try to get it from Amazon first, but sometimes it's more expensive or, or sometimes it just might take too long or whatever, for various reasons, I might not use Amazon. And, but I'm always anxious when I use eBay because I'm just like, man, I swear to goodness, this better be what they say it is, you know? And I've gotten items where it, it, it's not it's not and I'm just like you know come on man come on man that presentation will put you behind when it comes to your competition because people are not going to want to follow you they're not going to want to spend more money in your store and they don't have that trust I think people a lot of sellers underestimate that trust factor when it comes to uh, buyers and people might think well oh and, and this is what gets me too People will say, oh, well, you don't get repeat shoppers a lot on eBay. No, you do get repeat shoppers, especially if you're selling a lot of the same sorts of items. Maybe if you got like an everything store and you just here and there and got a lot of one offs. Eh, maybe. But my store is geared more towards having repeat buyers. Right. And so I need that trust. And a lot of sellers are not focused mentally on how can I build trust with my customer? How can I get this customer to trust me, to want to save my store, to want to save me as a seller and to want to come back and shop with me because they know, yeah, every once in a while I might mess up, but they know they're going to get what they what I show, you know, in my listing. The item is going to be as described, it's going to be shipped in a timely manner and it's going to be presented well. Like those are important factors. It's all about the mindset. So your presentation is important. And if you haven't been focusing on that, well, then you need to. And that brings me to number four which is customer service. That presentation aspect, that's a part of customer service, but customer service definitely goes a, a lot farther than that, right? It goes into from presentation to how you answer messages and how you deal with issues and problems. At the end of the day, if it's not your fault, it's your fault, right? It should just be, hey, I'm sorry, and then you come up with a solution to fix the issue. Yeah, they're scammers, but the majority of people are not out to scam you, I mean, I wish people would just stop talking about, oh, people trying to scam. The majority of people are not trying to get over. They're really not. 
Scammers are a very, very small percentage of the uh, buyer population, okay? The fact of the matter is, if you are not obsessed with a good customer experience, your business is only going to go so far and eventually will fail because there are people out there. There are business owners out there. There are sellers out there who are obsessed with the customer experience and who are focused and goal oriented when it comes to how can I make the best experience for my customer? And if we do mess up, how can we fix that immediately? This is why platforms like Amazon and Walmart and even eBay are so willing to make the return process easy, no hassle returns and things like that. While they will ding your account for not hitting certain metrics or for having too many negative feedbacks or just not providing a good customer experience because it affects their bottom line and their bottom line is affected when customers do not return to the platform. Yeah, Amazon might be known for just making it way too easy for people to return items, but Amazon does crack down on those who return items way too often, who um, use the A to Z claims way too often and things like that. I've seen it, okay? I've seen stories about it. I've seen things in the forums about it. I've seen even customers say that they weren't able, they wasn't able to return items because they had too many claims. So they do, they do that. But when, when a customer knows, hey, I can go get this and if I don't like it, I can send it back and get my money back that customer's coming back to that platform, all right? Now, whether they shot with you or not, that's a different story, of course, but they're coming back to that platform. And you wanna be a seller that is more likely to get the sale than not in whatever niche it is that you're selling in, you know, and, and whatever items that you sell. So I always answer any messages I get as fast as I can. I rarely let, I don't think I've ever let a message go a whole day without being answered. The only time I might not answer a message on eBay is if it's just some crazy stuff that somebody sent, but for the most part, I'll get back to them. You know, if it's something like, if it's one of those messages where I really don't need to get back to them, like right now, right now, then, I'll, then I might take a minute. But if it's something like an issue, if there's an issue with the purchase, yeah, I'm getting back to them ASAP, okay, ASAP. Your customer service experience has to be top notch, man. And you gotta remember, you're in a competition. You're in a competition with people who take customer service very, very, very serious. And if you want to be at the top of your niche, if you want to be at the top of your game, you have to take it very seriously. That takes us to number five, which is work ethic. Whether you're doing this part time, full time, especially full time, you got to realize that there's people getting up every day who's willing to put in the work, who's willing to put in the time. I know some of you have heard the saying about, you know, the 10,000 hour thing where if you want to be an expert at something, you got to put in 10,000 hours. Well, there's people who got more than 10,000 hours uh, in, in selling, in business, in their niche. You know, whatever it is that you're doing, you need to be knowledgeable. You need to be the first one up, ready to go, and the last one to sleep. You have to put in the work. If you're doing this full time, yeah, there's going to definitely be a limit, of course. That's, or if you're doing this part time, I'm sorry. There's definitely going to be a limit because it's part time, but you want to make that part time effort count. So you need to know, OK, if I'm putting in four hours a day on my business, right, let's just say four hours a day. Well, then you need to have a plan of what that four hours is going to be like. And each second of each minute of each of those four hours need to be uh, work that is going to help you accomplish your goals, getting done, no phone no bs right if you're doing this full time then of course you can't be bsing man when it's work time it's work time you know when you got time in your schedule where you you ain't working and maybe spending time with the family or you just relaxing trying to re-energize that's one thing but when it's work time then you need to be focused and you need to be working i just question sometimes when a lot of people say hey my business ain't doing good for thus and thus a reason but then behind that you know, if you, I feel like if you start asking questions and getting down to the nitty gritty, they really ain't working as much as they really think they are or as much as they should. You know, if it's full time, man, this is full time. This is full time. All right. Yeah. You might say, I'm, I, 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 Brian Tracy, I think it was him. I, I was listening to some of his material and he said, if you work in eight hours a day, then you just getting by. He said, people who are at the top of their fields, people who want to be at the top, who want to be the best, they putting in more than eight hours a day. They doing 10, 12 hours a day, right? And that's true. If you don't want to work that much, that's one thing. Unless you're already rich, 
then I don't know, man. And you want to live paycheck to paycheck, then go ahead and do your eight hours and, or just go get a job. Right. But if this is your livelihood, eight hours a day ain't going to do it. And I know there is some channels who say that you can. I, once you get at a certain point, it's probably possible to do eight or less hours for sure. Right. Once you get at a certain point in your business, you get systems in place and you get some people in place. But if, it, if you ain't got no if you ain't got good systems or you ain't got people helping you. Um, it's going to be really hard to do this eight hours a day and, and, and be as successful as you probably want to be. At some point, you'll get there for sure. You put in that time. The thing is, you have to make that time investment up front. And then it'll come back to you on the back end. Once your funds get up and your systems get in place, then you can start doing things and then you can maybe start, you know, you won't have to work in the business as much. And you can kind of step back and work on a business and have other people and systems in place to help you grow. But your work ethic got to be impeccable, you know. So that's all I got, man. Tell me what you think. Um, drop it in the comments below. Is there any areas that I spoke of that you feel like you need to work on? I know just for me, myself, there's always room for improvement, right? One percent, one percent a day. You take each one of these and don't have to be this big old plan and you try to do too much and, and none of it works. Right. And you make no improvement and end up going backward. Just look at it and say, how can I improve by one percent in each of these areas? So one, never stop sourcing Two, focus on your account health. That has to be a up promote, utmost priority. Three presentation. If, if you know your presentation is slacking, man, you need to step your game up Four, customer service. There's always room for improvement with customer service. Ask yourself what type if you was a customer of your product, would you be happy? Is there anything that you can do better? And then finally, five is your work ethic. How can you improve? How can you get better? Um, it's not always about working harder, right? Sometimes it's just about working smarter. How can you get better? OK, do me a favor. If you thought there was some helpful tips in this video, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you're notified next time I upload another video.